In this problem, we'll first predict the shape of the ICL5, or iodine pentachloride molecule. After that, we'll determine what the formal charges are of all the atoms in the molecule, if there are any, and then we'll determine whether or not the molecule has a net dipole moment. First, let's predict the shape of this molecule. In order to do so, we'll first need to make a Lewis dot structure, which requires us to know the number of valence electrons. For the iodine atom, we know that it is a halogen, and so it has seven valence electrons. In addition to that, it is surrounded by five chlorine atoms, each of which also has seven valence electrons. If we add all this up, that gives a total of 42 electrons. Now we're ready to begin to put together our Lewis dot structure. As always, we start by putting our first molecule in the center, that's our iodine, and then we're going to surround that by the remaining five chlorine atoms. Now, we have 42 electrons to dole out, so we're going to begin by adding some bonds. There's going to be one bond attached between the iodine and each of the chlorines, and each of those bonds gives us two electrons. Since there are five bonds, that's ten electrons. After that, we need to begin to satisfy the octet rule for each of our atoms. We'll note that the iodine atom in the center already has more than it can handle in an octet, but we'll cover that in a moment. For now, let's focus on the chlorine atoms. Each one currently has two electrons around it in the form of its bonded pair, so we need to add in its lone pairs. And in order to do so, each chlorine is going to receive three lone pairs. So now each chlorine has a satisfied octet. So now we've got 10 electrons in our bonded pairs and 30 electrons from our lone pairs, which gives us a total of 40 electrons. However, we're supposed to have 42 valence electrons, so we need to find another place for those additional two electrons. There's no reason to add it to any of the chlorines since they're all equivalent and we don't want to expand any of their octets. But since iodine is a bigger molecule and we can already see that its octet is completely satisfied being expanded, we're going to throw that extra pair on there, which gives us a total of 42 electrons and a satisfactory Lewis dot structure. Now that we have our Lewis dot structure, we can consider what the shape of the molecule will be. First, we need to consider the steric number of this molecule which we know is defined as the number of bonding partners plus the number of lone pairs of our central atom. The iodine, as we can see, is bound to five different chlorine atoms, so it's got five binding partners, and additionally it has one lone pair that's attached to it, which gives us a total steric number of six. Steric number can be used to predict what our orbital geometry will be, or where the positions of electrons are relative to the central atom. For a steric number of six, our orbital geometry is octahedral. However, this problem asks us to predict the shape of the molecule, and when we talk about shape, we're talking about the molecular geometry, which considers only the placement of atoms relative to the central atom. So orbital geometry can help us, but it's not the final answer. Now that we know our orbital geometry, we can take our Lewis dot structure and turn it into more of a 3D picture, and that's going to look something like this. To show the 3D aspect of this, we're going to draw a little plane around these chlorine atoms in the center to show that they're all coplanar. So now we've got one iodine atom with four chlorine atoms all on the same plane, and then we have one chlorine atom poking straight up from that plane, and one lone pair of electrons poking straight down. Now when we consider molecular geometry, we're no longer taking into account the position of the lone pair of electrons, so let's remove him. Now we can see that for each of the chlorine atoms, if we draw a dashed line to the top chlorine atom, we have what resembles a square pyramid. And as such, our molecular geometry is square pyramid. For step two, we're going to consider the formal charges of all the atoms in the ICL5 molecule. First off, we have to consider what a formal charge is. We've defined formal charge in the text as the charge that an atom in a molecule would have if the bond between it and a paired atom was broken and they split those electrons evenly. What that comes down to is that the formal charge equals the number of valence electrons that an atom would typically have on its own, minus the number of electrons that it has in lone pairs, minus half the number of electrons that it shares in bonding pairs. So we can sum that up with this little formula down here. Looking at our molecule, we'll note that there are two different types of atoms, the iodine and the chlorines. Let's focus first on the iodine. 
we'll note that the number of valence electrons that iodine typically has is seven, that it's got two electrons in its lone pair, and that it's bound to five partners, each of which has two electrons in that bond. So we're gonna do half of 10 electrons. Seven minus two minus half of 10 is zero. So we're gonna pop a little zero right on top of iodine to note that its formal charge is zero. Now we need to consider our chlorines, but we'll note that each chlorine is equivalent, so the formal charge of one is the same as the formal charge of all of them. So go ahead and pick a chlorine to consider. I'm gonna pick this one. If you also picked that one, good choice. We'll note that, like iodine, chlorine has seven valence electrons. In addition to that, it has three lone pairs, each of which has two electrons, giving us six lone electrons. Finally, it's got one bond to that iodine atom in the center, which has two electrons in it, so we're gonna do half of that two. And then we calculate our formal charge as seven minus six minus half of two, or zero. Again, we'll note that all the chlorine atoms are equivalent, so the formal charge of that chlorine atom is the same as the formal charge of all the chlorine atoms, and so we'll give each of them the little denotation for a zero formal charge. Finally, let's consider whether this molecule has a net dipole moment. For that, let's turn to the 3D structure we created earlier. To determine whether it has a net dipole moment, we first need to consider its individual dipole moments. Let's look at this molecule from two vantage points. First, if viewed from above, we'll see an iodine atom in the center with four chlorine atoms surrounding it equally on each side. That's gonna look kinda like this. Again, we need to consider the individual dipole moments, so we need to consider electronegativity differences. Chlorine is higher than iodine on the periodic table, and they're in the same column as one another, so chlorine is going to be more electronegative meaning our dipole will point from the iodine to each of the chlorine atoms. Now the dipole on the left and on the right are of equal magnitude, but point in opposite directions, so they're going to cancel each other out. The same logic applies to the chlorine on the top and the bottom. Equal magnitude, opposite direction, no net dipole. So when viewed from this perspective, this molecule does not have a net dipole moment. Let's consider it from a different angle, say over here. Now we're going to be seeing the iodine in the center with chlorines on the left, right, and top, which looks kind of like this. Again, we're gonna draw on our individual dipole moments, and we'll note that the chlorines that are on the left and the right, just as they did above, are going to cancel each other. Unlike above, this time the chlorine at the top does not have a dipole that's pointing down to cancel it out. And so from this vantage point, there is a dipole moment. Therefore, our molecule as a whole has a net dipole moment pointing straight up, making iodine pentachloride a polar molecule.